everyone. Today, I am going to discuss to you about economics, specifically the microeconomics. So what do we mean by economics? When we say economics, it refers to allocation of the scarce resources. Meaning to say, it is a, the study of allocating the scarce resources in the society. Because basically, the humans have unlimited wants and needs and resources are limited so that's the main point of economics and by the way when we say economics it has two branches first the macroeconomics which studies the aggregate the whole economy meaning to say it refers to the raw development gdp the national economy the gnp and the other branch of economics is the microeconomics it talks about the individual accounts like for instance the law of supply and demand the consumer behavior the supplier behavior the supply side so that's all about microeconomics now the scope of microeconomics are the following first it will deal with the decisions of the individual consumer satisfaction buying and selling decisions of the firm determination of prices and markets to quantity quality and variety of products as well as the profits so these are basically the major scopes of microeconomics studies now when we say microeconomics, it also talks about demand and supply. So basically, we will going to analyze the demand as well as the supply. When we say demand, it refers to the ability and willingness to buy specific quantities of goods in a given period of time at a particular price, ceteris paribus. It is not only desiring, wishing, or wanting to buy the goods. Basically, the person must have the ability to buy the goods, which means he has the purchasing power and he must be willing to pay the price of the goods. He has also the desire to possess that specific thing. That's the demand. The law of demand states, the higher the price of a product, the lower the quantity demanded. And the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. Which means that if the price goes up, the quantity demanded of a good will go down. Conversely, if the price goes down, the quantity demanded of a good will go up ceteris paribus so which means like for instance if the kilo of rice is 45 kilo pesos per kilo the tendency of the consumer is to buy less of the product in other words conversely if the price of the rice will be 20 pesos only of course the tendency is to buy more of the product so that's the inverse relationship between the law of demand of course when analyzing demand we can use three types First, we can have the demand schedule, we can also have demand curve, as well as the demand function. When we say demand schedule, it is a tabular form showing the relationship between the prices and the quantity of the product. Like for instance, the price of a product is 4 pesos, the tendency is to buy more of the product, which is 28. And of course, if the price of a certain product will go up, the tendency is to buy less of the product so it's a tabular form the demand schedule when we say curve it is a relationship a curve showing the relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded which means it is a graph a graphical form showing the demand analysis and of course the demand curve is a downward sloping from left to right basically if there is a movement from one point of this one to another point along the same demand curve it is mainly brought about by the increase or decrease in the product which means price determinants and of course if there is a change in demand the entire demand curve shifts from left or right resulting to an increase or decrease in demand due to other factors and of course the determinants of demand first we have the own price of the product the consume income of the consumer price of the other goods complements or substitutes taste and preferences expectations of future prices advertising and distribution of income lastly we can also analyze the demand using the demand functions it is a causal relationship between a demand dependent variable and the various independent which means there is a mathematical notation in analyzing the demand so we will have an equation and of course the other side of the coin we will talk about the supply when we say supply it is the quantity of goods that a producer is able and willing to sell at a certain price in a given period of time 
So the law of supply states that the higher the price of a good, the higher the quantity supplied, and vice versa. This implies that a higher price is an incentive for business firms to produce more goods or services as it will maximize their profits, which means that profit is the main drive to produce more supplies. Because with more price, the tendency is for the supplier to gain more profit. And of course, if the high prices provide incentives to sellers to sell more because of the expected increase in their profits. So that's basically the, the law of supply. Like for instance, the rice is 50 pesos per kilo. But of course, the tendency is the supplier will sell more of that price because basically they could gain more profit. And if the price is, let's say, 10 pesos per kilo, the tendency is there will be less supply to be produced by the supplier. Basically, profit is the main drive of the supply. This, when analyzing the supply, we could use the three types. We will have the supply schedule, the supply curve, as well as the supply function. It is a table representing the relationship between the price and as well as the quantity supply. Like for instance, here, if the price is one, the tendency is to supply less of the product. And if the price is higher, of course, the tendency is for the suppliers to supply more of the product. So like for instance, here 20, they will supply 35 of the quantities. Now, there is a positive relationship between the price and the quantity supply. And of course, in the analysis of the supply, we can also have the curve. So curve of the supply is the upward sloping, meaning there is a positive relationship between the price and the quantity supply. So in the supply curve, what happens when there is a movement from one point to another point along the same supply curve, it is mainly brought about by an increase and decrease in the prices of the product which means price determinants when there is a movement along the curve, the movement of the points. So there are determinants of supply. So like for instance, the price of the product itself, the cost of production, technological progress, prices of related outputs, as well as the government policy, like for instance, laws, the regulation laws, and the all factors other than price cause a shift of the supply curve. It is called a change in supply. These are the non-price determinants of the demand as well as the supply. So demand, like for instance, taste and preferences, income, prices of relief goods, substitutes, complement goods, expectations, as well as number of buyers. And of course, the curve is downward sloping, as you can see here, which means there is a inverse relationship between the price and the quantity demand demanded. And of course, the supply determinants, non-price determinants of supply are the following. Resource price, technique of production, prices of other goods, taxes and subsidies, price expectations, number of sellers, or supply shocks also. So the graph or the curve of the supply is the upward sloping, which means there is a positive relationship between the price and the supply. We have a review. The, the law of demand states that if the price of the product will increase, the tendency is to buy less of the product. If the price of a commodity will decrease or less, the tendency is for the consumer to buy more of the product. In supply, when the price of a product will increase, the tendency is for the supply to produce more of the product. And conversely, if the price of a certain commodity will decrease, the tendency is for the supplier to produce less of the product. Basically, the main drive for the supplier side is the profit. A market equilibrium pertains to a balance that exists when quantity demand equals quantity supply, which means there is a general agreement of the buyer and the seller in exchange of goods and services at a particular price at a particular quantity. So, of course, as you can see here, there is a balance. And if the quantity supply is more than the quantity demand, there will be surplus. Surplus. If there is a quantity demand that is higher than the quantity supply, there will be shortage occur. So that's basically, there will be market disequilibrium. And that's
that's all for microeconomics. Thank you so much.